The map of this video is Candy 1. Uh, it's uh, related to Candy Base, which is also designed by Mary Candyman Gazari, or Marin Candyman Gazari, sorry. Um, I'm almost 100% certain that unlike Candy Base, which was a port of a Quake map into Opposing Force, this is actually a completely original map, which might explain the name Candy 1, because it's 1, it's his first attempt. I, I, that's how I read it. I don't know if there's actually a reason for it, that. It could just be because it, it was, he was just bored, he was eating Skittles, and he thought, I'll call it Candy 1. You know, that's how thought process works sometimes. Uh, I would say that this is definitely more suited to the game it was brought into, or I guess in this case actually directly made for. I don't think it's an absolute top tier map, but I there aren't really any serious faults to it. Uh, the flow is good. Um, yeah, let's just take a look. Actually, it's sort of ironic I said the flow is good because first time playing it, you are going to get lost in this map. Um, but once you actually have, like, even for a few minutes played it, uh, it's pretty easy to remember where everything is and, you know, you have a pretty good time killing each other. Um, I recommend eight people in spite of the size of the map just because it gets a, a lot of, there are, there are quite a few cramped corridors. And I feel if you have any more than maybe, like, you know, 16, even though we're doing... I personally recommend 8, but you'll probably go up to 16 and be fine. Um, I just feel like it's a little too crowded in a lot of the areas that people spawn in. So anyway, there. let's, let's start down here. Grab that long jump ASAP. Obviously, you got your obligatory water pool, which you'll jump into with the shock roach that you can find up there. And just to kill everyone in there. You know, this is the best strategy. That's the only strategy, really, for these games. Alright, so the thing is, in this water area, you got a few ways to climb back up into, like, some of the higher areas. you got this one over here, which we'll take a look at. That's the most... What would you say? What direction is this? I don't know directions in this map, so fuck it. Um, and you got this area, obviously, is one way. You can't climb up this way. So you have to, if you drop down, you have to come back out into here, which, you know, makes getting the long jump a little risky. Uh, there's another ladder over here that I was mentioning. This one's got health. And this one takes you, can take you quite up high, which is, uh, upwards is where a lot of the really good weapons are in this map. So keep that in mind. Yeah, see? Yep. Yep. Anyway. So yeah, actually, let's walk back this way, because we're actually up here now. Um, that's, there's a bottomless pit here. If you jump down in a bottomless pit, uh, you're probably going to hurt yourself. As in, you're probably going to die, so don't do that. Um, anyway, explaining the central area again. Um, here's what it looks like from above. Obviously, grab the barnacle and use it to swing around, but I don't really need to tell you that. Um, if you jump down from that way, as you can see, that was where the other um, ladder was. And we'll come up here. Be careful climbing this one, obviously, because you're going to be an open like, target for pretty much everyone on the fucking map. Um, up here, let's go back this way first. You got yourself a spore launcher. Good fun. Um, you got a, the map's only teleporter, which I'll take. we'll take a look at later. Obviously, you got everyone's favorite machine gun dude thing here. So grab that. If you come in here, that's where that other ladder led to earlier, if you'll remember. The one with the health. And again, this one can take you really high up, so keep that in mind. You got the shotgun. Always a good choice. Unless you're far away, then it's a fucking terrible choice. Um, you got an SMG, also a good choice. And you actually got another Spore Launcher. This map has, I think, two. It might have three. I honestly don't remember. Um, if your monitor is dark enough, or, like, your light settings aren't, like, you know, your brightness settings are too low, you are definitely going to need the night vision goggles, so you're going to pray that, you know, the server, or, like, whoever's running it actually lets you turn that on. Uh, if you're careful, and you, people get out of your way, um, you can jump over here to this little area. Which leads from, which is where that other um, ladder led to, but it'll also lead you into like this kind of river area we started into. More on this one later. I don't think there's actually another way you can uh, get into the top area from that ladder too. Um, let's explore over here a little bit. I'll t I won't talk about this area too much, but first you get uh, yet yeah, anyway. You get the shotgun here, and this will lead you kind of overseeing that little river area. It's not much of a river, but you know what I'm trying to say there. The small flowing water that leads into the pool here. Alright. So that we got you educated on that. Let's go back this way. Oh yeah, and I'll show this teleporter real quick. This actually leads you to the little area we're talking about. The, the, the flow area. The flowing water area. And as you can see here, if you go through that area immediately, you got a nice little area that overlooks the, um, 
kind of like the collapsed uh, catwalk area. And you can come over here. This is an area that I don't think a lot of people are going to remember. Uh, you can get up here. I don't know if you necessarily need the barnacle to get up there or if you just need a well-timed jump. It's worth finding out, I suppose. Yeah, look at that. Don't even need the long jump. You could totally make that. Just be careful. If you get up here, obviously, you get everyone's favorite displacer, which, you know, can be very helpful. Uh, I don't really believe there's anything up there. Like, it looks like there could be a little ledge up here, but I don't know if you can actually get up from there. Maybe if you do some, like, grapple, like, you know, mechanics or something like that. Some pro strats. So anyway, let's get... I want to talk about the pool area first for arbitrary reasons. So we're going to climb up here first. Just start on the higher area, where you can get some shotgun ammo. So this is the highest area. I guess I'll talk about this part a little first. Obviously, if you want to get up here faster and you have the barnacle, use the barnacle. You got everyone's absolute best buddy, the sniper, which everyone loves. And this is where that other ladder led from. If you come this way, you will find another long jump. Uh, I, I tend to notice that in a lot of these opposing force maps, the, the various different developers insisted on having more than one long jump in the map. Which, considering the fact that it doesn't... There's no option to have the, um... Like, the long jump mod modules, like, instantly respawn, like some of the weapons do. Oh yeah, and you can get a knife there. Don't want to uh, overplay that. It's funny, the two, oh, like, you know, what melee weapons you can pick up are right next to each other. That's a little weird. On the highest part of the map, next to the sniper rifle. Okay. Um, this is an elevator. Um, the Iron Giant is a little bit stupid, so I'm gonna have to kill him. I'll show you what it looks like if I let it lower. Yeah, you can ride that up from down there. Which, I don't know why the Iron Giant's bleeding red blood, but, you know, we're just really getting off topic now. Uh, here's, uh, like I said, the Shock Trooper. For great justice, you want to jump it down there immediately and kill, like, you know, a suicide. And hopefully, there's more than, like, three people in there. And then you can get some nice major kills. This is where that other area led to. Not much to say there. You got some ammo there. Um, you can also get into the uh, river area from here, which we're about to talk about. You can also get into it from here if you so choose. That's about it for this, like, the main, the pool area, let's call it. Pool's closed now, though, so we're gonna go this way. We're gonna talk about the river. You got a couple of options for the river. You can go down this way. And the thing about this river and the amount of people that spawn here, and why I only recommend eight people, is that not only do you got the rocket launcher, but you got the fucking gauze over here, too, actually. Um, uh, it's somewhere. Actually, I think the gauze might actually be in the river. It's somewhere, yeah. You see, I just picked it up, yeah. So you got through two super powerful weapons right there. And so obviously if you got like 16 people or more just hanging around in that central area, barely anything's gonna actually get done. It's just gonna be a bunch of people dying immediately and you know. You know, that might be fun in spurts, but you know, I kinda like actually having some breathing spaces I've let on before. Anyway, make sure you grab these claymores and use them wisely. That's not really inclusive to this map, I just felt like talking about that. Um, so yeah, here's the other area. You can go up here. Um, before I do that, though, let's go this way. And if you go this way, that leads into, from that shotgun catwalk area. So, you know, that now you know how to get, like, get around a little bit better. And like I said, it's a little bit weird first, but once you know the flow of this map, especially with the long jump, you can just be jumping around, bringing the absolute pain to everyone. Obviously, you want to take advantage of the satchels to get some easy kills. Again, I don't really think I'm teaching anyone new. If you do choose to take the catwalk, you gotta put like a battery. Always fun time. I showed you this ladder area earlier, we walked that way. And this is how you can also get into the shock troop area, or shock roach area if you need to. So let's jump up here. And uh, finally, the top little area here. Um, you know, and also too, if you have the barnacle from the other part of the map, you can use it to get back up really quick from the bottom area. And fall down and humiliate yourself. But now I get to show off! What I was just talking about. It was intentional, damn it. I totally meant to do that. Anyway. So yeah, use the stairs. And you get the, um... Whatever the this magnum is, because I don't know what the hell anything is. Desert Eagle. Um, grab that. And, you know, obviously some good sniping. Obviously the better choice would be to use the sniper rifle, but, you know. In a pinch. Up here you get the SMG if you need it. You can also get the crossbow. Which, you know, is another great choice. Obviously, I don't really need to tell you that. Probably the least choice of the three snipers in the map, but oh well. And yeah, you're back down here, and I always forget this ladder, actually. Which, again, which brings it just more into that flow. There's very few ways that, you know, don't have... There's very few points in this map where you can't have multiple ways of getting around. 
The only real exception to that is the drop-off to the one long jump in the, um, uh, kind of pool area here. Everywhere else, there's multiple ways to go and to get out of situations. So that's kind of why I like this map. There's also two knives. I always forget about this one over here, so make sure you pick that up for reasons, because, you know, they never bring a knife to a gunfight, except you can. Up to you. Personal choice. And yeah, it's a good map. Um, I personally think, you know, it take, I, I'm not really a fan of, you know, people killing themselves. I'm not really a fan of a map, like a deathmatch map that takes too long to, like, learn. Which sounds weird, because, you know, it sounds like I don't like complicated maps, and that's not true. But the thing is about, a lot of the other best deathmatch maps in these games, you can kind of understand within, like, a, two or three minutes. This one takes a little bit longer. If you had to spend, like, you know, spend a match or two to really get it. But once you do understand it, it's great fun. Uh, definitely play this one if it's, like, you know, happens to be in server rotation. Ah! Gotta be honest, as much as I like, um, Candyman's, like, actual maps here, like, they're both really good. I gotta say, they're both kind of aesthetically boring. Like, he obviously focused more on the gameplay, but, you know, come on now. Like, you know, I've, I've seen... There's a couple of other opposing force maps that ship with this game that I haven't covered yet that look really damn good. Um, uh, uh, on uh, top of being really fun to play. But, you know, he uh, maybe it's just because they were coming from the Quake days. Like, where, you know, you're more... St it was really early 3D graphics still there, and you're more focused on the experience in multiplayer and, like, trying to keep a good frame rate and stuff like that. Because, I mean, single player, you want it running good, too. But, you know, especially in a skill-based, like, you know, deathmatch game, you want your performance as good as possible. So, you know, you can focus on, like, like you know, frags and stuff like that. That's probably how Candyman was thinking here, but, you know... I feel by 99 and with this game and like, you know, this game here, you could have gone a little bit deeper in terms of like visual. Oh, well. Oh, I forgot about the ledge. Oh, I uh, like, it was like a split second in the air. I tried to direct myself again. I'm like, oh, it's just too late. Yeah, run at someone with, with a crowbar when they have a shotgun. Good, good thinking. That's desperation. I don't recommend doing that, especially in real life. 